I'm Limo Alan, and in this video, we're going to explore Ableton Live's Velocity device. So the Velocity device is a MIDI effect. So it processes the notes as they leave the MIDI clip or are processing incoming MIDI notes from a controller. And then it converts that data before it reaches an instrument. So I've got a few different dynamic MIDI clips set up. So by dynamic, I mean with varying amounts of velocity, low and high values. So I have this percussive loop that's set up. I'm just going to drag the velocity device onto this. So th there's two key different reasons why you might want to use velocity. One of them is that you want to reshape the MIDI data into what you want it to be to work within the context of what you're working on. Another thing is you might want to use it as a modifier. So at certain points within your composition, you want it to be a different relationship of velocity values. So it can be used dynamically and automated. So different sections have different ranges of, of velocity values. So at this point, I'm going to show you the main parameters that we can use. So the first thing to get used to is we have a transfer curve uh, window here, which basically lets us know how the signal is being modified. And if I start running the low value up to around about halfway at 64, what it means is any of the information that's actually would be passing through this normally will actually start passing through at a higher value up to the to the the top value, which is 127 as well. So if I play the clip again, I'm going to modify that so you can hear what that sounds like in context of changing the velocity data. So all the notes that were lower values are now matching what the highest value of the device can be. So everything's basically at a fixed velocity amount now. So everything's hitting 127 velocity value. There's another way of doing this. We can go into what's called fixed mode, and then we're only left with that high value, and that will convert all incoming velocity values to just one fixed output value. So that could be moved dynamically. If you have something that's not programmed with much velocity, you can use that and move it up and down to create a sense of motion to the velocity data. So that's our clip mode, which we're in initially, and then the fixed, vote, fixed mode. So let's go back to clip mode for a minute, and I'll show you the different uh, parameters that we can change uh, beyond the first one that we we've looked at. So one thing is the operation mode itself we can make it change two different types of velocity data. In this case, I've only got velocity on data. So when the notes are struck, there's a velocity value given out by the MIDI notes I've programmed in. In some cases, you might also have some uh, release velocity data, which is the velocity value when the note is depressed as well. So you're just basically choosing whether this is going to process both of those types of values per note or just one or the other. The other controls that we've got, we've talked about our actual high and lowest amounts. We also have the ability to be able to use what's called a drive. So like distortion works, if we have a positive amount of drive, it starts pushing the range of all the sounds further and further up into the higher register. Uh, register meaning higher velocity values. And then we can do the opposite and go in a negative value and start pushing the range of information slowly down into the lower um, values. So I'll just do that again. So as you, like a distortion, as you push further and further into the top, you get less dynamic range and the values are all bunching up into the top area too. Speaking of the dynamic range of velocities, we also have a compressor and an expander. So if we want to compress the range of the uh, velocity values, we can reduce to the left, we can go to a negative value for the, for the comp dial, and it will take what could have been many different values between 1 and 127 and just start squeezing them together so the dynamic range is less, just like a compressor works for audio. Or alternatively, let's say if we start off with something that only has a range that much, we can actually expand that range so the highest and lowest values have a further space to travel and we actually increase the dynamic range. So hopefully you can hear that the, the higher accented parts in my pattern are actually being turned up even more. So we're expanding that, uh, that data. So another thing we can do is we can randomize 
Uh, there are various ways of randomizing MIDI data in Ableton Live now, and this is just one of the ways that we can do it. And this is quite nice, again, because it can be changed at any time. It's, it's a live processor, so it's not going to be committed to the MIDI clip itself. So especially useful if we want to have some randomization on sounds to make them live and breathe a little bit more, but they're, they're not necessarily going to be musically orientated, just generally randomized. So stuff that might want to be dynamic, but sits in the backdrop of your track, it's good for that kind of processing. So the, the final thing to look at here is the gate mode. So the gate mode has a different behavior. It's gated in respect that it will deny entry, so basically close the gate on certain velocity values. And that's what this range control is there to control. So if I'm in gate mode, let's have a quick look at my MIDI clip actually. So my highest value is here, which is a velocity of 88, it says in the bottom left there. So if I go back and I start reducing the range in gate mode, it will sound normal, 127, but as soon as I get towards the 88 mark, I'm actually going to start going below the highest value of velocity, and those notes will simply be just ignored and not allowed to pass through. And the opposite, if I bring the lowest range, I can make it ignore all of the quieter velocity values and then just allow the higher ones through as well. So as you can hear, it actually creates other rhythms because it ignores certain parts of the dynamic range of the velocity data. So it can be used dynamically. Again, we can automate this um, and we could just use it to play around with the data we've got to get more variations. In this video, we've had a look at Ableton Live's Velocity device, what the main parameters do, how we can use it in a static way or use it dynamically to create more variations to our ideas, and the different modes it can have for either modifying or muting certain notes based on their velocity values.